Hello, I'm Odin, and on my channel, I like to play April Fool's videos. They're not really jokes, they're just goofy videos to help celebrate the whole idea of April Fool's Day that happens on April 1st. It's at least an American thing. I don't know how well that translates internationally. And this year, the video that I made was jokingly talking about making a large-scale Razor Crest, a full-sized one. But as soon as we saw it outside, it simply explodes. Now this past weekend at a swap meet that I was at, I had a lot of people actually asking me, how did I do that and where did I get the model that was on the desk? So I thought this week, I'd show you how I did it. Now this video was only three shots, three camera angles. The second is the most complex, so let's start there. The main background dirt is right off of a bike trail near a friend's house. We set a camera very low to the ground and recorded a couple of minutes of dirt just sitting there being dirt. I used Photoshop to create a mask to remove the neighborhood, but I kept the dirt and its horizon line. And for the distant background, I replaced it with a couple of pictures that I took a few years ago when I had visited Vasquez Rocks. Now these are the same rocks that you see in everything from Star Trek to the Flintstones. I mean, Bill and Ted died here in Bill and Ted's bogus journey. What's neat is it's just a natural area park right off the freeway. If you look away from the rocks while you're on them, it's just a parking lot. I closely lined up the horizon on the two pictures that I took and color corrected them and then blended the seams. This was all done in Photoshop. I also erased the signs, some of the trails and fences and cleaned up the sky. The last part was an extra piece to cover up this bit of the dirt road. Adjust placement of the rocks Add the dirt back in, and I just need a ship. The Razor Crest is a low poly model that I found on Thingiverse. It was meant to be used with the X Wing game, that's why there's no landing gear. But it was all in one piece, just one simple model. I didn't need to assemble a huge 3D model with 40 different parts in the computer. Now, I didn't think about it, because that way I would have the landing gear. What's nice is the ship never moves, so I just rendered the STL file in Photoshop. I can adjust the camera within Photoshop to get the angle that I want, and I can set up a global light to represent the sun. The final render is a little too light in color, so I adjust the levels for a better looking ship, and then add some sky reflections with a transparent blue layer. And then I add in dirt reflections by copying the dirt below it and putting that back on top of the ship with a transparency. Both had spots that were erased and the edges were feathered out so they didn't just look like color plastered over the ship. When it explodes, I used a stock explosion with a transparent background. Now I like this particular explosion because it had all the debris in it, even though it was cut short at only two and a half seconds long. And it was super small. I increased its size 400% so it would fit within my shot. And for a little extra, I also found some ground debris that was rendered to look like it was coming right at the camera. The debris effect was doubled to make it look like there was even more, and adding sound effects was all that was left. All the elements were put together in Adobe After Effects. The sound effects were added in Adobe Premiere. The overhead drone shot was done in the same place where the low dirt shot was filmed. But I had spread out a couple of bags of black dirt, or black mulch, that was bought from the garden center. I just tried to get that wily e. Coyote explosion mark on the ground. The drone was flown by a licensed drone pilot. <laughs> you can actually be a licensed drone pilot, and video production crews are supposed to use them. To enhance the shot just a little, I added in a couple of smoke layers, you know, just a little haze to tie it in with the explosion we just saw, and then I kind of burnt the colors in Adobe After Effects to make the mark on the ground darker. Now, as for the Razor Crest that's sitting here on my workbench, that's the exact same STL model. I just repositioned it and angled the camera a little bit lower to try and kind of make it look like it's sitting on the desk. And then once it was rendered, I did some color correction on it, making the shadows a bit harsher, making it a little bit darker. For a last minute job, it's okay. <laughs> now the one regret that I do have with this whole thing is that I didn't actually set up a camera to record us cleaning up the blast mark. I mean, not that like that's huge major April Fool's gold, but I think it would have given the idea more that it was actually real. We I actually bothered to set out this big explosion mark for whatever reason. 
Um, we actually filled up the green waste container of my, my friend's house, getting all of that off the field. Even though it's really funny because I would imagine the dirt that I had laid out was better quality soil than the dirt it was sitting on. I know there's gonna be lots of different ways to make an April Fool's video, and at the same time, ripping a razor crest shaped hole in the heart of Jesse. But this is how Odin makes.